Hi and welcome to Read Becca. So we're gonna try this a second time. Unfortunately, I got everything set up, got started, and my work called on the phone that I am filming on, so I kind of had to take it. Um, put out a fire, so hopefully that is done. Uh, I had a really good reading week, so I um, am cat sitting, and I pretty much just took my book and sat quietly with the cat um, that would that likes me. Other cats who haven't met me previously uh, are not so not so happy with me being there, so they just kind of hid out. So I was trying not to disrupt anyone too much. But I got a lot of great reading on in progress books there. Uh, as far as what I finished, so I finished up Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Okla Tukarczuk and translated by Antonio Leif Jones. So I did a very quick kind of mini review of that. I really enjoyed it and it's got a great elderly lady protagonist, which I love. Um, and it's kind of just set in very rural Poland um, during the winter for the most part, um, but it takes place over several months. And um, it very much has to do with the intersection of humanity and nature. So I liked it quite a bit. Uh, the next thing I finished on audio was The Windsor Knot by S.J. Barrett. And I enjoyed this one so, so, so much. Um, it is all about the queen, like the 90 year old queen of England, uh, solves mysteries <laughs> and she does so secretly. Um, so it's her, her and she kind of asks sly questions because people underestimate her because they think she's kind of a doddering old woman. And it toes the line so wonderfully between proper and irreverent and her taking, um, taking advantage of the fact that people really underestimate her because she's an elderly lady. So two great elderly lady protagonists this week. Really, really happy with that. So that is a fairly new release and the first in what's supposed to be a series. So this one I will definitely be following on. Uh, next, I finished a manga. I finished up Comey Can't Communicate Volume 3 by Tomohito Oda. And this one I really liked. It was my favorite of the series so far. Um, I had liked in previous uh, volumes when they kind of lean more uh, slice of lifey and this one was all just like individual issues that were slice of life so she goes swimming she goes out to dinner with her dad um, she, they get ice cream that kind of stuff so I, I just really enjoyed it it's very low effort um, real easy to read and you can even though it's fast to read through a manga as it is you can just read through one section at a time and get pretty much a complete story or episode. <laughs> so I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Um, what else did I finish? I, I think, oh, the only other thing I finished was a children's book that I picked up, Watercress. And this is by Andrea Wang and pictures by Jason Chin. And I think this is probably a first for me in that the uh, Goodreads algorithm actually suggested me something I wanted to pick up. So I was looking or logging one of my other children's books previously and it suggested me this one and looked really interesting. So I went to my library and picked it up, of course, and um, just, of course, of course, I picked it up based on the art. I love the art, but the story was so good too. They stop on the side of the road when the parents see some watercress and go to pick it. And of course, the little girl is super embarrassed and um, doesn't want anything to do with it. But um, through that, she learns her family's history in China and um, kind of how these skills of foraging have really helped them survive. And so she comes to have a new appreciation for her cultural history. So I really, really liked that. The themes were great. The writing was great. The art was great. All around, loved this one. And that is what I finished this week. So what I've got in progress, I'm still reading The Dragon Banker um, on my Kindle and really enjoying it. I've only made a little bit of progress. So I'm about 30% on that. Uh, Shadow of the Wind. This is the one I made the big progress on while I was cat sitting and I'm almost halfway. So I made a little more than 50 pages uh, this week, even though I was reading a ton of other stuff. And as well, just between, I think, um, 
Friday, no, Thursday, Thursday and Friday, uh, I read almost half of Pew. I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I will probably finish it tomorrow, but it's reminding me quite a bit of the writing of Tin Man by Sarah Winman. And I'm wondering if I'm going to kind of have the same feelings where I really like the writing, but I don't as much like the book. Uh, this has really interesting themes though of um, kind of a identity and other people's need to put people in a box and have labels up for them, um, particularly as opposed to just caring for that person. So I think that is it for stuff that is actually actively in progress. Then I have got on the docket for this weekend, uh, My Brother's Husband, Volume 1, and I also have Volume 2, but I probably will not get to it this weekend. And when I went in to pick up Watercress, very exciting, very, very exciting for me. Um, the, the stock at my library has been fairly low because while they were doing uh, curbside only, um, they kept everything kind of central for distribution out. So the shelves have been much more empty than usual. So I walked in to pick up Watercrust and the shelves were full. The new releases shelves were just packed. Um, so I could not resist and of course wandered over and started looking at everything. And um, so they've moved to having stock back out based on the fact that um, traffic has been good into the libraries and all the branches. So, so they've kind of redistributed. So I picked up one thing. <laughs> And so I'm gonna have to read this pretty quick because I, I think it's gonna have holds on it. Uh, the Rain Heron by Robbie Garnett. And this is an Australian work, I believe. I think it was just up for the Stella Prize. But Greg from Supposedly Fun has been absolutely singing the praises of this book and it is one of the favorites of the year. So uh, I saw it on the shelf, on that new releases shelf and immediately had to pick it up. And it is just gorgeous. I also seen the UK cover is quite pretty. It's got like really bright splashes of color, but I like this one quite a lot. So that one I'm going to need to probably read within the next week, but I don't think I'm going to get to it this weekend. So that is my reading progress. <laughs> I think that's it. And I don't know what I'm going to pick up in audio or that I will have a ton of audio booking time this weekend, um, but I'll, I'll have to search out something new. So then in other random stuff, uh, nothing major going on life-wise, I don't think. We've had storms every single day this week, uh, so it's not been very dry and it has been very, very humid, so it's pretty miserable out. So my poor dog has not wanted to go out at all, either because of the heat or because of the rain. Uh, so we've been doing very, very short walks, almost only to the front yard. Um, so that has been most of the week. Um, I did due to the storms last weekend, I think I mentioned when I was filming, I did not have internet. I had power, but no internet. But I actually went to the library because of that. And um, when I did that, I decided to check out some DVDs so that I could watch something since I had no streaming service. So um, I picked up Murder on the Orient Express, the new one, because I had not seen it. And it was really, really good. Um, I enjoyed it so much. The performances, I think, particularly were great. I love Kenneth Branagh. I'm a huge fan of him. And in terms of mystery specifically, it was not as kind of distinct a character, but him in uh, the Wallander adaptation that he was in. There's two different Wallander adaptations and he was the star of one of them. He was so, so good in that um, series. So really enjoyed him, really enjoyed everyone in that uh, movie. So enjoyed that one. And then I have just absolutely continued on my binge of Veronica Mars. I'm well into the second season now and I was really surprised that they did not carry on or try to drag out the the big mystery, if you know what that is, of the first season. Um, they, they do actually complete that and you get closure at the end of the first season. So that was very cool. So now we're kind of moving on. And I love how um, there are several different series long arcs in the plot. We've got uh, kind of the dad's relationships. We've got the main murder. Um, we've got things to do with Veronica specifically. But then um, we have the individual episodic mysteries. So I really enjoyed that format. And I think 
I have probably never really understood the love for reverse harems until I watched this show, and now I'm kind of getting it. So that was what I did watching. Um, random other stuff. So I had to make a list because I had so many, so many things. Um, so number one, uh, The Iron Book Dragon did a wonderful, wonderful review of uh, Redemption in Indigo by Karen Lord. And I would highly recommend you check that out. Check out his channel because he does fantastic single book reviews. Very much more detailed and elegant than I ever could. Um, so really recommend checking that out. Uh, Booktube with Simon and Amy, which I think I just saw today. Um, Simon has decided to take a step back from doing Booktube and so it's now Booktube with Amy, but it was mainly Simon doing this. Um, I did a Reaper Man review from Terry Pratchett's Discworld. And it is full on with costumes, voiceovers, and uh, cutscenes. So it's so, so fun. Um, really recommend checking that one out. Uh, next up, there is Jen the Librarian uh, is putting together a LGBTQIA plus spreadsheet for works in translation. So that is gonna be a fantastic resource for me personally. Um, so I'm sure a lot of the people that are watching me are really going to be interested in that as well. So I will definitely link that and link her video describing what she is um, trying to get into that spreadsheet. And then finally, um, speaking of works in translation, I didn't plan this, but uh, I'm about two weeks late, but there was an announcement for the short list of the Rosetta Awards, which are apparently a sci-fi and fantasy in translation award. And I found this really exciting. I think the list for this is probably one of the most exciting short lists that I've seen um, just for me because I love this kind of work. So there are there are two awards, one for long form and one for short form. So the short list for long form is The Disaster Tourist by Young Ko An, uh, translated from Korean by Lizzie Bueller. And that one I has been on my radar is one I wanted to pick up, but I thought it was a contemporary. I did not know it was SFF. Uh, Vagabonds by Hao Jing Fang, translated from Chinese by Ken Liu. That one is really on my radar. It's a huge, chunky book, so I have wanted to get to it since it came out, um, but haven't. Daughter from the Dark by Sergei and Marina Dechenko, translated from Russian by Julia Mietov Hersey. And that is one that is, again, high on my radar. I have Vita Nostra on my TBR and on my physical shelves, so I desperately need to get to that. They sound like they're going to be absolutely authors that I love, so I really need to get to that one. Red Dust by Yoss, translated from Spanish by David Fry. And I think I actually have two books by Yoss on my uh, on my Goodreads TBR in general, and they're an author that I have wanted to check out for a while. They're, they're a very popular um, South American uh, translated author that I would love to get to. And Quality Land by Marco Kling, and translated from German by Jamie Searle Romanetti. So in fact, the translator's name has changed since I read it. So um, that one is one I absolutely loved, and I have a complete review coming for. So those are all sound really great. Quickly going through the short works, uh, The Ancestral Temple in a Box by Chen Kui Fan, translated from Chinese by Emily Jin. And uh, Chen Kui Fan wrote Waste Tide, which is yet another one I have physically and I need to get to. Uh, Rosin by Wu Guan, translated from Chinese by Judith Huang. Uh, this one I don't know anything about. Whale Snows Down by Kim Bo Young translated from Korean by Sophie Bowman. And uh, Kimbo Young just had a collection come out and I wanna say earlier this year, I think it's out. Um, I put in for an arc and got denied for that though. Uh, Cousin Entropy by Michelle Lefranois, translated from French by NRM Rochac. Uh, I don't know anything about either that work or the author. Uh, Biography of Algae by Martha Riva Palacio Obon. Translated from Spanish by Will Morningstar. Again, I don't know anything about that one. And The Witch Dances by Tiago Ambroso Lage, translated from Portuguese by Iana Arujo. And I think a lot of these came from a magazine I have not heard of before, um, the Future Science Fiction Digest. And I looked into them a little bit and it looked like they have done 
kind of regional themes in the magazine. I've seen that done by some of the other SFF magazines, but that since I haven't heard of them, I think I'm gonna definitely have to check those out and see if I can get a hold of those. So that award sounds super exciting to me, and the it looked like every single one of the short works is available to read online. So um, I will link to the award shortlist and that has links to all of those works as well. So very exciting reading week and a very exciting bookish week. All of this stuff is great and I highly recommend you check out those links down below.